Okay, YouTube, we're going to attempt to make a Land Rover door skin. Uh, kind of like these ones over here that I that I showed previously. So I'll show you, show you how I do it. Um, got a couple of things that are going to help us out. So I've already cut um, a whole bunch of blanks. Uh, when I started out doing this, uh, I figured out what, uh, what my template was with a couple of marks on where the bends are, where the cuts are, where the folds are. Um, which I use to then cut out a whole lot of blanks. We'll use this in a moment just to mark out a couple other things we have to help us I made up this as well, which is the Land Rover hip profile to uh, check my radius And then these we're going to do at the end. So these are a couple of blanks that I got cut out to match the uh, where the where the radius comes around in the door handle area uh, So we'll use those at the very end to, to help us out a couple other hammers, dollies, general things, and um, the procedure area I showed you earlier, plus this this folder that I made. So let's get started. I need a scriber. So we have um, we have our blanks cut out here. Now when I buy these sheets of aluminium, they always come with this protective protective. So this is going to be our outside. And I'm always cautious to cut first, then make my make my measurements. Now there's really only actually one, so we just double check our size. Uh, double check our size. Make these slightly too wide to help us out later. Okay, so just feeling with our fingers with the edges there. I've actually since modified um, how I make these. So some of these cuts out here are a little bit superfluous. So I want to take my scribe and I want to go right in the middle there. So I originally marked these out and then drilled here. So I had I had my marks. But then I know that I've got I've got folds to do around all the edges, which I can actually I can actually take. Uh, with my with my small engineer's measure, so that's got these two marks here. Might just grab this because it'll be a good learning tool during the do. So the very first step in these is to bend this part up here. Then we're going to curve the radius. Then we're going to do the edges. Then we're going to do the handle. Okay. So I take my take mine over here to my homemade bender, uh, which is this one. So I'd really love to have a proper larger um, folder. But unfortunately at the moment I don't have the wallet to do it. Um, so what I did do when I when I needed to gear up to make all these is I went down to my I have a really handy scrap metal slash second hand engineering's yard relatively close to me and they sell steel by the kilo so you can go in there and I just bought a couple of pieces of angle iron um, we'll talk about my pipe anvil at the moment and then I just made up this really rudimentary folder which um, actually slots into the pipe ends of this panel stand which I then made years and years and years ago so it's kind of just as effective as it needs to be um, it's not perfect um, but it works well enough for these edges here. Now we're going to actually use this profile in a minute. So the rough first bend here is around about 45 degrees. So because we're trying to bend a big big amount here in the middle, I actually have to put weight on it so it doesn't curve around. And we give it a kick up. And then we actually um, check with our profile so we can kind of eye it up. Um, both sides to see is it roughly 45? No, it needs a little bit more. Right, do we have the 45? Yeah, we're about there. Okay, so I'm going to stop now because I'm going to do the other, other ones all in the one go. Okay, I'm just doing the last one of these now. So I have my marks here on the fold line. Grab a bit of leverage. Fold her up. Take my profile. Double check my initial angle. 
or away lifting. So you'll see a stack of them over there. Because um, I do these in batches, I can get three skins out of a panel of um, panel of panel of steel from my local merchant. Um, this time I'm actually doing five skins because one guy actually only wants a driver's and um, a barn door which is super simple I might do that on a separate or I don't know. Um, so we've got our uh, initial fold up here. This is actually not a super critical dimension um, because you have your galvanized capping come over here. Um, this bit ends up being critical because you've got to account for your hip and then you fold at the bottom. I'll show you how I double check that that's right. So earlier video I showed my pipe anvil here again built out of just some local scrap steel note this piece of square tubing which I put on the back end of it now the hip is the hardest part of this whole thing to do and if I had the wallet for it I would actually I'm going to move, move this If I had the wallet for it, I would do this in a set of rollers, but I don't. And we can somewhat get this about 90% where it needs to be, and then figure it out, figure the rest out later on. So we take this hard up, you'll see why I'm using this now. Take this hard up to there in the middle. And because I'm a kind of stocky guy, we can just fold. And so I usually kind of fold it and then spring it back. And it's as easy as taking this back out. The other side now you've rolled a hip and again we're actually gonna sort these out sort that final final profile out a little bit later but the tricks to get it so you're bending from the from the middle otherwise if you try and roll the sides you end up with a with a great big hollow in the middle of where your hip line is supposed to be which doesn't look all that great so yeah, so I'd love a set of rollers for a few thousand dollars, but I've made this out of I think it was less than fifty dollars worth of steel for all of these bits. It's kind of pays for itself. So roll it. And I'll show you another trick using this pipe anvil in a minute. Okay, we've rolled our radiuses here on our hip. Next step is actually to start um, folding the edges. Um, we're going to do the hard ones first and then leave the easy ones for the last. First step is to do this top one because it gets it out of the way for the next step that you've got to do. I find it's easiest just to do this in a vise um, because you'll find the general workshop vise is wide enough to capture that. Also, um, this hip starts to mess around with the folder so it's actually a real pain to try and get it in there. So. You can use a workshop vise to do this. I'm going to do it off camera because it's in the other shed. Okay, back to where we are. We've got all these edges folded, done in the vise. Notice I don't fold them 90 degrees just yet. It makes it a lot easier when you go to put these on the door frame if they're not always folded over, except for this bit. That's a critical part and we'll come back to that later. So, over to the pipe anvil because we've got another trick up our sleeve. Now, one of the hardest things to do, actually, I need my, need that. One of the hardest things to do in, in this panel here is to fold, fold along a hip. Um, and there's a couple of different ways you can do it, but which I've tried in the process of doing these. What I've found is actually the easiest is to line it all up on my, on my pipe anvil here. Um, the hammer in there for a minute. Line it all up on my pipe anvil. I know that the width of of this is just under the width of my um, 
my rule here so I can I can do it so that I'm going to be relatively straight I mean that's the biggest hassle you have with this is um, rolling it rolling it straight whether you're using a, a dolly or whether you're trying to do it on a bead roller is rolling this whole edge along here straight so what I find it is easiest to do is to take it get your edges and then just capture the edge See, I've captured the edge there, don't need to go nuts with it. Roll it a little bit over so you can catch the next bit. Roll a little bit over so you can catch the edge but next bit. You can, you can also check, make sure you straight down here as well. Capture the next bit. And then the last little bit. Okay. Now then, you can keep it rolled, and you can capture these. And this actually gives you a couple of shrinks in the process. I might actually go a little bit further there, so I can capture, check my edge. And then, do it that way, and so that way. You get a nice crisp edge along here um, it's straight and then you can actually fold those down and you can actually start a little bit of shrinking what we will do is probably go back in the shrinker at the end and just kiss this little edge because this doesn't doesn't come back now if you look at the original panels uh, on your door skins you'll notice that this area is a lot the fold along here is a lot narrower than the fold along here I tidy these up at the end because you need to give yourself the space such that you can get the get the shrinker along here. So same as the other side. Let me grab my measure. Same deal as before. Get yourself lined up on the edge there. Get that lined up. And then And you can you can feel it when you don't have the panel tight across the top of the anvil. So these have a bit of spring back in them, obviously. When you go to do it, you can see now I'm making these ruffles, which is I'm making. I'm making the shrinks which is a good thing because you're ultimately going to have to shrink this edge down and if you can do it here that saves you a lot of hassle later okay so what I'd usually do is come over to my dolly here um, come over and grab one of my toe dollies here put it under and come into the shrink. You don't need to get this all 100% right now. All we're trying to do is bring this edge over. Leave this because we'll, we'll sort it out later. You can also grab it up in here in the middle as well, so you can take it there if you need to correct it back at the end. Notice how I said I leave this one not 90, but I do leave this one 90 because when I send these out to people, I want to make sure that that hip is hip is is correct. Um, when you're putting these on the on the frame, this is also the critical area to start from. So I want where they're starting from to be absolutely correct and tight, and then you can adjust the rest of the folds uh, as you need to. So that's why we're doing it that way. Okay, just to note where we're at, um, in that step, and I've 
tidied up some of these a little bit. I'm not going nuts at the moment. Um, all you're really trying to do is to get a nice crisp line on this curve. And if you can, grab a couple of ruffles over there to, to shrink the middle of it. <clears throat> Due to the nature of the way you can pick of the way you have to kind of pick it up, you end up being a little bit long here and kind of actually pretty good right around right around this edge here. Um, so what I tend to do is to chuck it in my shrinker and just pull up, short, shorten this edge here. Uh, I have my shrinker set up on, on this little homemade pedestal. Well, you see a lot of things around here are cheap and homemade. So usually just two, two or three. I can, I can feel the panel coming out of me. Two or three little kicks is often all you need to bring that top end around. Now I'm doing this kind of freehand, not to set, and I don't have my profile with me. I'm not setting the profile. I'm just kind of bringing it around a little bit just so I can do the next step because the next step is um, figuring out my length. So my next step's to, to do the bottom edge. Now the critical length in this whole thing is actually this length here. Um, which you have to be a little bit careful on how you do otherwise you're never going to pick up your bottom edge on your door properly and when you go to try and measure where your handle is you can't you kind of got to measure it from the bottom edge because you've got nothing really here to gauge it from um, so do this one do the bottom edge first and you typically find it easier trust me I've figured this out through trial and error and a few few pars um, what steps I need to go through in order to make the whole thing whole thing kind of come out semi-decent um, so if I had all the professional gear I probably wouldn't have to do this because I would have had I would have set my radius perfectly or close to perfectly in rollers rather than a pipe anvil I probably would like to have a pipe anvil to do to do this radius radius tip just so and I've tried it both ways I've tried it in this tipping wheel as well but I just find that I'm just not you know when I'm doing it by myself I'm just not that as straight and it's just quick and easy um, to do it that way and so it leaves a really nice really nice crisp crisp edge um, without being overly sharp um, you do want to be a little bit careful around doing all this that you don't overwork the alloy a little bit because you will find that it then it um, starts to split on you and I also found with my first set of prototypes if I didn't get it right where I actually had a separate cutout where the radius ends oh sorry where the hip ends I'd end up in a situation where I've fatigued a corner and it'll come low and you've got to spend time to take it out and then you've also still got it all still got it all at risk of come on um, at risk of, of tipping over of cracking on you um, so I find that this is you can kind of even see it there the radius coming down tight um, so I can shoot I can find that when we come to do it at the end it's actually probably not that far away okay continuing on um, I've done this bottom edge here and I, I kind of like the folder that I got here doesn't quite do these super short edges all that nice so what I like to do is do it some of the way and then the rest of the way. Um, this is just, and usually I actually do most. I do most of the folding with plastic dead blow um, because a it doesn't stretch the alloy. Um, alloy is really easy to stretch, and b um, doesn't mar it up either, so you don't get little little marks all the way through what you're trying to do. So. That's our bottom edge. Put that in. Um, then what we end up doing is we end up doing our side edge here as well. So I need to make a small cut relief 
for the side edge. Because that's going to fold in. And then a bigger one. There. So a small one. When you're doing these edges, also don't finish it. Like, don't finish it. Otherwise, you'll find that it, it just kind of smacks it around a little bit when you're finishing it blind like this. Okay. Oh, I'm going to be able to see. So, go in 10, go in 10. Yeah. There. Okay. All right. This is an example of what what you're usually dealing with when it's ready to replace. So this one here, this one's bashed the corner on something. The edges are all marred up and folded over. These dents, these cracks at the top of the door, that's really, really common. You've got dents all through it here. Someone's drilled holes for some reason, and you're all starting to oxidize um, galvanic corrosion all at the back. So that's why you typically end up uh, having to replace these. So other side, now this is where my little box pan, little folder comes into play. Um, so you'll notice that I have um, shortened it because I kind of need to, to to deal with this radius back there. So the trick is to get in, get in there, up to my measurement, and give it a little tweak, and give it a little, and you have to. Be really careful to bring the panel up with it or else you'll get a great big indentation down the middle there. So I've been able to avoid most of that. I'm gonna finish this bit off by hand. So go back, make some marks. I typically mark these all up beforehand, so I'm just kind of showing it for everyone. Make the mark 10. Make the mark. Yeah, I can't remember, is it this one? Oh yeah, this side. This side is a bit of a pain. Because you've got your radius coming up over the edge. This is kind of the problem when you when you're doing panels like this. This, which is supposed to be the easiest bit, and it actually is, which is why I'm leaving it to the very last. This is actually the hardest, so. Notice how I'm, I'm pulling up as much as I can on, on the panel and I'm just using this folder just to bring it around because otherwise, like I say, you will mar the panel something chronic and you'll never be happy with it. So this I'll just take out with the sander. Um, you physically cannot get, at least with my one because it's too narrow, uh, the panel in the other way. If you had lovely big one you take out the sides and actually come in and then you just fold it all in uh, but then we've got pretty much the panel we want and then we come back and grab radius gauge and see where we've got to bring it around and we've got to bring it around through the middle here um, this one here is probably also going to come up so let's take a couple of shrinks I usually take, kind of go three. You don't really want to have to overdo it because otherwise, then you got to go back to the stretcher and you make a goddamn mess. And look, we're 90% of the way there. Just got to make it a little bit further down. You 
can kind of hold it there as well and see how much of this I can actually bring this edge up separately which is why I'm holding it this way and that bit so I'd rather have it older over folded than under folded because when you come down onto the frame you want to be able to have it tight and wrap it around if you got it floppy and not enough shape into it you'll end up trying to roll it with the edges and you'll fold this up and it'll make it absolutely a mess um, so these edges are actually really easy to come back off and reset it so i did the bit on the other side and then i more or less got a panel uh, so i'll do this and then i'll show you my finishing here's the one i'm doing on the other side and we see where pretty close to perfect on this one as well cool so then what I typically do actually no we typically do that last sorry is I'll take my file my panel file over here and I will go through so you usually end up making some slight some slight high spots and low spots there I'll go through and I'll tidy that up and I'll come in in behind here if I need to um, this might be a touch low. Coming in behind here a little bit if I need to with my dolly and tidy it all up. And then I also want to blend in this corner a little bit. So you're gonna wanna just take this a bit more. Just so it sort of blends in and when someone goes to put this on um they're all they're all sort of good to go um so like i say you've got you've got it tight here tight here and then you pull the rest of the panel progress progressively down on the other side okay we're getting to getting on to making this thing look more like a door skin so i'm going to make the right hand drivers uh side um, so I said before I had these profiles cut out and then what I did is I took one of my original door skins and then I matched up the dimensions that I'd need to do to um, to get it correctly situated in the panel um, because if you stuff it up it's kind of the rest of the panel is wasted okay so I've got kind of two ways to check it I've got my measurements side to side and bottom to bottom you really do need to make sure that that is correct first we went through that previously and then I've got just a basic gauge here which I took off another one um, which has got the correct radius on it which we've now got and then lines up where two of the holes are I do that take a sharpie and then I just broadly bring ourselves in you know X amount um, we're going to give ourselves lots to fold down and then trim it all up at the end um, so we do that and then what I tend to do <coughs> is to grab a drill um, drill the corners of it and then take a pair of tin snips and um, and take the rest of it out that way Okay Kind of last step in, in making the making the shapes in this panel is is now this so we've cut it out I've got the the partner of this is why I have two of them um, You have the partner of the other side um, sitting there This one up here make a sandwich and so what that does is not only gives you your hammer form on the other side but stops the panel bowing up as you do it um, I've kind of done this in a few different ways you can and I'll, and I'll do it, do at least one part of it is to get a ball pen hammer and make some nice nice good curves around your edges I'm actually just cut this out with a jigsaw I'm gonna see if I can actually do it this way well, that's somewhat successful It's doing all right. Cool. So now we're folding ourselves down there. Um, I'll grab. Do I have one? Oh, I'm gonna have to get a. All right, there we go. Ball peen hammer is perfect for these radiuses in the corner. I like to do these, hammer these first because it it traps it. So, so it's 
so when you're trying to do the other side, other parts, it doesn't um, doesn't wander on you. And so what I often find is actually these hammers and even the wall pan side of it um, are better. There we go. Well, I do like that method. Tidies it up a fair bit. Um, let's check. I usually do have to dress these a little bit once we're out, and I'll show you how. <coughs> so, take that off. Take my other clamp off. Take sandwich number one. You see, it's already started to form that nice radius, these generally stick, oh no, this one doesn't stick, flip it over, uh, I usually try and use the smaller one for this, uh, because it allows me to get in there, and then once you're on the other side you can see where all the edges are, okay, now we got practically, I'll try and do it a bit on this one here, uh, practically finished product. Um, so this has got the radius put into it. Um, the last things that someone would want to do is we need, there will be drilled holes here for the hinge and then drilled holes around here for some pot rivets to fit it on the door. Um, last thing I tend to do before sending these out to people is to take an orbital sander over it so it sort of blends out um, any little marks and also makes it all ready for painting. In a future video, I will show how to skin one of these onto a frame. I've kind of got about three frames here that I'm working on for someone and we'll make probably one good one uh, out of three because all of them are very bad. Uh, but that's the, that's the quick how to, how to, hope you enjoyed. Understanding how to make these, how kind of simple it is. I think this is probably one of the world's simplest door skins. Um, and um, yeah, let me know what you think. Thanks everyone.